go ahead and roll insight. Howdy folks, I'm Dabbas Volt, and welcome to Rolling Insight, the Dungeons and Dragons series where I give you some insight on topics for the world's greatest role-playing game. Today I'm going to walk y'all through the physical tools of the trade when it comes to DMing. Now I'm going to start with some basic tools, things you'll see most DMs using out in the wild, and after that, we'll cover some more extreme things to really boost your games to the next level and beyond. First and foremost, we've got the essentials. Player's Handbook, Dungeon Master's Guide, and Monster Manual, as well as a DM screen. These are the bread and butter for every D&D table, as right here, short of dice and people, you have everything you need to run a game. Dice are also important, as they're the engine that runs the game. You don't need to go dice goblin crazy and hoard them, just one set will do. No! Now, a common misconception is that you need to read these books cover to cover to be able to play the game. That is a dead lie. The code is more what you call guidelines. The rules. I've been DMing for five years and I haven't even read the player's handbook cover to cover. I read what I need and I'm good to go. But you need to read the rules of the game in order to play it correctly. <coughs> Page 4, paragraph 7 of the Dungeon Master's Guide for 5th Edition D&D explicitly states the D&D rules help you and the other players have a good time. But the rules aren't in charge. You're the DM, and you are in charge of the game. <laughs> the f***ing rule book said f*** the rules! But adjust your mileage as necessary, as it's probably gonna vary. Now, some DMs will opt to have no screen, instead just using a computer and rolling in the open. This establishes a level of trust with the players, as they know you're not fudging rolls. But I like my screen, my curtain of secrets where the magic happens and the Drago Lich totally didn't crit on you with an attack that you're vulnerable to. And if you think this is bad, some DMs used to stand behind entire curtains by themselves to appear as this otherworldly voice from beyond the void, and they wonder why we had a satanic panic in the 80s. Moving on, one thing I do need to cover is cost. You might look at this bundle and some dice and think, well, I got everything I need right here. But before you go throwing your wallet at the great big rainforest, you gotta realize this is over a hundred dollars and you don't even get an adventure module with this bundle. Now, if you have something already made up for yourself or you're borrowing a buddy's books and you want to graduate to your own personal copies, that's great. But still, that's a hundred dollars for basic rules. And unless you know this this is something you want to do, something you really want to sink your teeth into, I would advise against buying this out the gate. I would recommend the starter kit. I know, f***ing <coughs> Weenie Hut Juniors, but hear me out. It comes with basic rules, pre-made character sheets for your friends, dice, and a module. Forget this, 20 bucks. One fifth of the price for three big books plus a screen and, okay, cool, a fancy sleeve. <laughs> 20 bucks for all this. That's pretty hard to beat in the face of over a hundred dollars for three books, a screen, and some dice, with, again, no module. But wait, we can get even cheaper. The basic rules for Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition have been publicly posted online for free. Just make an account on D&D Beyond and they'll hook you up with the most up-to-date version of the basic rules for free. You need dice? There's apps on your phone that do that. And if you don't want to download new apps, your browser can do that. And on iPhones, you can even ask Siri to roll any numbered dice for you. Everything from a D2 to a D1 million. She'll roll it all. With all this in mind, you can absolutely run a D&D campaign for absolutely free. But Dabis, I want the books, but I don't have any money. What will I do? Well, there's two options for you. One, you can either get a homie hookup from your friends who have books, I'm usually the homie who gives out the hookups, or two, the dark path. You see, there was this whole thing going down called the OGL or the Open Gaming License Tragedy. There's a lot of way smarter people that explain it way better than I possibly can. But the brass tacks of it, with the whole OGL thing going down, some people panicked and did some kind of silly things and put, you know, almost the entire 5th edition lexicon on the internet for free. Yes, some dastardly fellows of ill repute have taken Wizards intellectual property and displayed it freely on the public internet for absolutely free. 
Did I say free enough times? Shit's free, yo. And, you know, there might be a link in the description, or, you know, editor me might put something on the screen for, you know, to research, but that's future me's call. I'm not gonna make that call for them. I don't wanna get into any legal troubles. I'm not saying go do the things, but if you wanna, I can't really stop you. But anyways, what about the opposite direction? What if you're already doing the thing, singing the chant, doing the dance, and you want to know some more tools? You want the stuff. You're ready. You got your wallet on standby with your credit card information so you can plug it into that big Google machine and it can give you everything you want. Where do you go? Well, I got you. If you want to upgrade your game of D&D, here's some things I can recommend. First and foremost, a dedicated dry erase play mat with one inch squares. Now, you can go to a craft store and get any type of wrapping paper, and nine times out of 10, they'll also have one inch grids on the inside of the wrapping paper that you can totally use. And when you're done with your terrain piece, just tear it off and throw it away. Bada bing, bada boom, easy day, recycle. The point of this though, is that it lets you draw terrain super easy for your players to place their minis on, which is a whole other thing too, miniatures. Little people, for you and your players to represent characters and enemies in the game. You can buy these things pre-made and already painted, or you can buy them unpainted. Some people go to craft stores and buy the tube animals you see in the model section and use those, myself included. Sometimes, if I'm stuck on a combat encounter, I go to Michael's or Hobby Lobby and look at some of the cool figures they have there, like this mechanical dragon. Tell me if your DM dropped this thing in front of you, this artificer's wet dream, you wouldn't say, hot diggity f***ing damn, that shit looks dope. But I digress. Along with miniatures and playmats, you can also get pre-made terrain pieces and even pre-made terrain. These can be bought at any local game store that sells D&D stuff, as well as online. There's also these lifting pad things to represent flying or levitating stuff, as well as condition tracker rings to place on your minis to track effects. There's also monster and item cards for creatures of all CRs and items of all rarities. There's expanded DM screens with clear slots, magnets, dry erase boards, dice towers, and all sorts of other nonsense. There's also dice trays for rolling and holding holding dice along with notepads, writing utensils, and miniatures. There's even whole tables you can buy with TVs built into it so you don't have to draw maps anymore. You can just display them. These tables can come with dice trays and compartments for players to put their things, as well as cup holders and even LED strips. You need maps? There's tons of Patreons that make maps for these virtual games, and they can even be animated. Or go on YouTube. There's all different types of virtual tabletop backgrounds from all your favorite video games and all different environments. But I want to make my own maps because none of these maps are good enough. Guess what? There's programs you can buy for making maps. I personally use Wonderdraft and I've had a wonderful time with it. Not only that, there's also things you can use to animate the maps that you make. I'm talking fog of war, realistic lighting, Unreal Engine 5 type nonsense. And if you really want to crank up the crazy, remember that 3D terrain stuff I was talking about? Guess what? You can make it. You can buy a 3D printer and print your own terrain and miniatures and then you can paint them and then after all this is said and done you want to know what you're broke your wallet is totally empty. Yeah, unfortunately high tier D&D like this, like what you usually see on Critical Role or Dimension 20, is really expensive. Like really expensive. Like, that's my first car five times over expensive. But, thankfully, you don't need all the fancy bells and whistles to play the game. Most folk get by with a screen, a laptop, and a fold-out table from Walmart. Now me, I'm crazy, crazy and my family supports my crazy, and I love my family for supporting my crazy. So I have some fancy bells and whistles. For example, here's my DMing setup. I have my screen with tips on exploration and basic stuff like AoEs and actions during combat. I also have my tablet for campaign notes, stat blocks, and music control. I also have a speaker in front of my screen to blast some sweet environmental tunes into my player's ears. I also have a dice tray with quite a few dice, a sketch pad for quick personal notes, and whatever minis I plan to use for the night. I don't usually have large minis or even a lot of minis, mostly minis that I either buy or make for extra special people. So yeah, some bells and whistles, but overall, I consider it humble. And with that, I believe we've covered the long and short. Also, new big video is in the works. So, if you like this video, drop a like and subscribe, and be sure to ring the notification bell for when that big video drops, as well as future videos like this one. If I miss anything, let me know in the comments below, and I'll see you next time we roll insight. Have a good one.